Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to our seventh annual telethon for stroke and aphasia awareness. I'd like to welcome back Dr. Richard Lidman, who is the Chief of Vascular Neurology at Northwell Health and the Professor of Neurology at School of Medicine at Zucker, uh, which is Hofstra Northwell. Uh, thank you for your time. I know you've been a guest with us a number of times and you always bring a lot of really good information. So I'm giving you the floor. I think you're gonna to speak to us about wake up strokes. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ginny. And uh, hello to everyone, even though I can't actually see you. I know you're out there watching and thank you for watching and listening. Um, I, we're gonna to talk today about a few new ideas in stroke and recent innovations and recent developments, uh, mostly concerning the treatment of stroke. That means treating a person who comes in with a stroke immediately, helping them to hopefully recover from the stroke, get better. That's in the very early stages. And I think we'll touch on in another segment a little bit about recovery and rehabilitation. But I think for this segment, we're going to talk about something a little bit new. Um, and it uses technology for, it gives us a new ability to treat some people or patients who have had strokes in the past whom we would have had to exclude. In other words, whom we wouldn't have had the opportunity to treat. And I'm gonna tell you why. Let me give you a little bit of the background. As many people know, one of the standard treatments for stroke is a clot busting drug called TPA. And uh, it was shown about 20 years ago to be effective, and it's been kind of the standard of care for immediate early stroke treatment now for a couple of decades, actually almost probably closer to 25 years, and has been shown in multiple studies to help people, stroke patients get better from their stroke when treated very early. And as many people know, the initial time window was really, really tight. It was three hours. You had to be treated within three hours or we really couldn't use it because we didn't have any evidence that it really helped. We had some evidence that maybe it didn't help and maybe it would even be harmful. And then several more studies, we found out that we could stretch the window a little bit, not a whole lot, not a huge amount but out to about four and a half hours. And not about, but basically out to four and a half hours. And so far for TPA, that's been kind of a, a hard stop, you might say, that if the time of onset of the stroke was more than four and a half hours, we don't really have evidence that we can help, meaning that you still have to get to the hospital as quickly as possible. And the sooner you treat, the better. Now, that's kind of the background for TPA. Now, here's the dilemma we had for years. You know, there are lots of times when a person can actually have a stroke during the night while they're asleep. And then they wake up in the morning having had no idea what happened. For example, they wake up, they try to get out of bed, they fall down to the floor because they haven't yet even realized that one side of their body is completely paralyzed. And that's how the stroke is discovered. They call, or a family member, or someone calls 911. You get to the hospital as soon as possible. Now, what can we do normally in those circumstances? We say, well, when did the stroke occur? We don't know. You woke up with this problem. And the last time we could say you were definitely normal was when you went to bed. And you can say that and you can tell us, when I went to bed last night, I was normal, fine. I went to bed at 11 o'clock at night, I was normal. I woke up at seven o'clock this morning and I had a paralysis on one side of my body. I realized it when I tried to get out of bed, I couldn't walk, I couldn't stand up, I couldn't support myself. Called 911, came straight to the hospital. Can you treat me? It's only been a 20 minutes since I woke up. I came straight to the hospital. And what's the answer? The answer has been no, because we have that four and a half hour window to treat you. And up until recently, there was no possible way we could establish whether that stroke occurred one minute after you went to sleep, four hours after you went to sleep, or one minute before you woke up. 
And if it was one minute before you woke up, fantastic. We, you would be well within that four and a half hour window and we could treat you. There was no way we could possibly tell. So up until recently, if you woke up with your stroke, you were automatically excluded from treatment with TPA. And we always thought, everybody involved with stroke always thought this is a terrible thing because um, we're excluding all these, but we're, we're not offering this treatment. But we couldn't offer it because if we thought you were within four and a half, half, four and a half hours, let's say we just made a guess. Well, you look like someone had the stroke, you know, an hour before you woke up. It took you half an hour to get in. So, you know, you're two hours from onset or something like that. But we couldn't guess that. There was just, there was no way. We couldn't tell. Remember the CAT scans that we do in general don't show us the stroke. And uh, it's too early. You have to wait a little longer before the CAT scan even becomes positive. And if it does become positive, let's say in the first four hours or so, the changes are so subtle. You can see some subtle changes, but you still can't say whether that stroke occurred three hours ago, four hours ago, five hours ago. As soon as you get to five hours, you're outside that, that time window of four and a half hours. We can't treat you. So the CAT scan didn't help us. The CAT scan helps to tell us, well, there's no bleeding in the brain. Great. No bleeding. We can treat. No bleeding. We know it's a stroke due to a blockage, not to bleeding. Fantastic. But it doesn't tell us the time frame. And that's what we've been stuck with all these years, having to exclude and avoid treating people who came in who woke up with their strokes, with, which, by the way, is not that rare. At least 20%. At least 20% of all people who have a stroke awaken with that stroke. And um, so think about it, you know, 850,000 new strokes per year in the United States alone, 850,000 new strokes per year in the United States alone, never mind worldwide, with millions and millions of new strokes per year. Um, up until now, wake up with your stroke, we can't treat you. So that's the background as I've rambled on and on. Now you understand the background. Now the kind of part that's exciting for us may not be as exciting as the latest James Bond movie that I just saw the preview for, only in theaters, unfortunately, and who wants to go to a theater? But there's James Bond on one side, and if you're comfortable as Ginny is, maybe, maybe I will as well, go to see James Bond. Much more exciting, but for us as stroke neurologists, still exciting is the use of MRI instead of CAT scan. And uh, we use MRI for all kinds of things in neurology, and it's a great, great technique. It's just a little more complicated. You know anybody who's had an MRI. It takes longer to do. It is somewhat uncomfortable in the sense that it's kind of closed in. People who have claustrophobia don't feel very comfortable. It's loud. It's noisy. Um, there are definite disadvantages, but there are definite advantages because you can get pictures on an MRI that you can never get on a CAT scan. And guess what? It turns out that when you look at MRIs, you know, there are different sequences, sort of different technical types of pictures that you can get with an MRI. And it's taking a picture of the brain. And uh, some of these sequences on an MRI are so sensitive for a stroke that you can actually see the stroke developing very, very early after a stroke, very early, much earlier than a CAT scan. And then there are other sequences on the MRI, other pictures that also show the stroke, but they take a little bit longer to show the stroke. And guess what? It's absolutely amazing. You have these two pictures on the MRI, two different types of sequences, like different types of pictures. One type of picture on the MRI shows the stroke almost immediately, probably even within minutes. Within minutes of onset, boom, you actually see the damage. That's the stroke. The other picture on the MRI, the other sequence, shows the stroke, but it doesn't begin to show it until very close to four and a half hours 
after the stroke has started. Astounding. It's as if the MRI was designed to match our time window for stroke. So what does that, this mean is that when someone comes in with their stroke, they awaken, they went to bed the night before, we know they were last normal the night before, we can't do any better than that. Now we can rush them to an MRI, do the MRI. We know that one sequence will definitely show us the stroke because that becomes positive and shows us the stroke almost immediately within a few minutes. That's incredibly useful because it proves that it's a stroke and it shows us it's not some other condition. The patient has, hasn't had some seizure or some weird type of migraine or, um, you know, has taken some odd uh, type of drug or something like that that might be mimicking a stroke. It shows us the stroke. And then the other sequence, if we see the stroke on the other type of MRI picture, we shouldn't see it unless it's at least four and a half hours, at least four and a half hours. It doesn't start to show it. So if we see it on the first sequence, fine. That's within minutes. We expect it. If we don't see it on the second sequence, then we know we're within four and a half hours and we can treat that patient because that second sequence doesn't begin to show the stroke until about four and a half hours. If we see it positively, on both pictures, then we know we're at least four and a half hours. We can't treat that patient. It's unfortunate, but at least we've screened the patient and we know at that point they're not going to benefit much from the TPA or might become more dangerous. We can exclude that patient, what you might say, in a rational way. We're not just guessing because you went to bed. We don't know. We have to exclude you. It's really bad. There's nothing we can do. If the MRI does not show a stroke on that second sequence, shows it on the first one, that proves almost beyond the shadow of a doubt that even though this happened during your sleep, you couldn't tell when it happened, it was actually within four and a half hours. And basically that's what the data show, that's what the studies show, and it's what we've incorporated into our protocols, into our system basically, at all of our Northwell hospitals now, so that when you come in with your quote unquote wake up stroke, whereas we used to have to exclude you, we're now rushing you for an MRI, getting these two types of pictures. It gives us the information we need. If it's positive on one, absent on the other, we know you're within four and a half hours. We've got the TPA ready, right in MRI. The second we finish that scan, we look at it. And if it's appropriate, we start the TPA. And that's the bottom line. That's what we're calling wake up stroke. And it's allowed us to treat just that many more, you know, it used to be like up to here, we could treat the patients. Now we can treat up to here because we've got that extra 20% or so of patients awakening with their stroke and not all of them, but some of them we can treat by doing this new MRI. It's actually not a new MRI, but it's being used in a new way. And it's allowing us to treat, treat more patients and they have better outcomes. There's no question about it. So that's the concept. Dr. Libman, how long have, have you known about this? How long has this technology been in, in, in use? Yeah, I mean, the technology, yeah, good, good way to word it. The, 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 word, the wording is technology in use. The technology has existed for many years now, and MRI has been able to do it. It's just that nobody thought of it before. <laughs> and then there were a couple of very, very clever uh, you know, scientist type doctors, uh, clinician, investigators, and scientist types who said, why don't we test this? Let's see exactly when this becomes positive, when this becomes positive, let's see if it will allow us to detect when it becomes positive. What time frame is that? It involved taking lots and lots and lots of patients with strokes of known time of onset. Obviously not when they woke up. If they just woke up, nobody really knew when it occurred. But if you knew when it occurred, start doing MRIs on all of them. And then you see at one hour, at two hours, three hours, four hours, five, six, seven, eight, when is that second sequence actually showing the stroke? It took a huge amount of sort of exploration first. That was published as a big study, probably going back a couple of years. 
And you may say, well, why are we only doing it now? You know, after a study like this is published, it takes a lot of review, a lot of criticism, a lot of analysis before people are satisfied to say, you know, this study is really telling us something. Let's incorporate it into our daily practice. So in terms of the time frame, of course, we all wish we could have figured it out a long time ago, but the studies, they're not ancient studies. The studies are relatively new. There's no way we ever take one innovative study and the next day we start applying it because there's not enough common experience with it and sort of further analysis and scrutiny to know that we're really doing the right thing. The last thing we want to do is jump on the bandwagon, so to speak, too quickly and then find out, hey, you know what? There was a little flaw in that study. Uh, they made a little mistake. They overlooked this. And now we're treating patients based on that. And maybe we're hurting some people and we're not helping, you know, we're not helping them. That's the reason for close to a two-year delay. We had to look at it and others had to look at it very carefully. Plus, don't forget, it means revising our whole protocol. Up to now, patient comes into the emergency department, boom, CAT scan right there in the emergency department, get him into CAT scan, treat, don't treat with TPA, whatever the case may be. Here's a totally different paradigm, you might say, to use that word, a whole different design. MRIs usually aren't located in emergency departments. They're somewhere else in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And getting an MRI, for anyone who's ever had it, you know it's a lot more involved. You, don't, you can step into a CAT scan, almost nobody cares. You better make sure you're not having any metal in your body before you go into an MRI. Um, you know about pacemakers and things like that. You have to do all kinds of screening studies. Do they have a pacemaker? Is it safe to put that pacemaker in the MRI? You have to do all kinds of things to make sure that MRI is safe for this patient. Were they in uh, Vietnam or uh, you know uh, Iraq and they have shrapnel, one little piece of shrapnel in your, under your skin and that MRI can't be done, it's too dangerous. It's a big magnet that's gonna pull that metal out of your skin. It is dangerous. In other words, MRI is much more involved. It's not just the science and proving that the science is correct and we can now use MRI to select these patients, it's just much more involved and we had to get our protocol to make sure we're doing everything right for the safety of the patient. We've now incorporated it and we Thank are doing much, it. Thank you Dr. Living. You always bring us good news. You have something that's right up to the minute and uh, we thank you for your time. Uh, but I want to tell everyone to please stick around. Uh, we have another segment with Dr. Libman coming up. He's going to discuss a new replacement drug for the TPA that's been used for many, many years. Uh, it's a drug that's been around for a while, but now they're finding that it, this may completely replace the TPA. And he will tell us exactly why. So thank you very much. <laughs>